Hello, Rin. In this INR number 34, we are going to discuss about another important topic, Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome or WPW syndrome. Right, so what is this? This is a pre-excitation syndrome of the ventricle. So this is the most common type of ventricular pre-excitation syndrome. Right, so ventricles are early excited by the atrial depolarization. So what happens here? Because of the abnormal fast accessory conduction pathway, remember? there is an abnormal fast accessory conduction pathway is formed from atria to the ventricle with the help of bundle of kent right so now you can see that this is the bundle of kent which is connecting the atria to the ventricle right so this is the fast accessory conduction pathway so this fast accessory conduction pathway is via bundle of kent what will happen this will bypass the av node so see normally conduction is from SA node to AV node then the ventricle will be having depolarization but what is happening because of this there will be the fast conduction to the uh, bundle of Kent and and this will bypass the ventricle so because of that there is a bypassing of the AV node and this will cause pre excitation of the ventricle that is why that ventricle will be earlier excited normally you can see that at uh, that SA node AV node then ventricle is getting contracted you know, the, uh, you know contraction or depolarization but here what is happening they are bypassing and this is helped by a bundle of kent that is the fast accessory pathway conduction pathway which is causing early pre-excitation of the ventricle so it is commonly associated with AVRD means atrioventricular reentrant tachycardia so this is the tachycardia which is called as AVRD tachycardia so what will be the signs and symptom in this patient palpitation dyspnea dizziness and maybe death also happen in this patient so because of these things we have seen that because of the bypass by the bundle of kent what we are going to expect on the ecg finding so ecg finding we are going to see the early upslope or upstroke of the qrs complex so on ecg you can see that because uh, atria is fasting uh, atria is fastly transmitting the uh, ventricle depolarization through the bundle of Kent so you can see that QRS will be earlier slope so that is why delta wave has been formed so there is an early upstroke of the QRS complex that is what we call delta wave so early upstroke of the QRS complex will be called as delta wave because of early activation of ventricle through the bundle of Kent right so bundle of Kent is activating them earlier that is why there is a formation of the delta wave here so QRS upstroke is earlier because of this upstroke early, you can see that how, what will happen to the QRS complex. So they will also become broader. So that is why wider or broader QRS complex will be there. Because of the widening of the QRS complex, what will happen to the PR interval? So now you can see that PR interval is also getting shorter. So PR interval is getting shorter. So these are the three important ECG finding of the case of a wolf parkinson white syndrome so what are the characteristic triad of the wolf parkinson white syndrome so you can see number one slurred upstroke of qrs complex which is also called as delta wave so slurred upstroke of the qrs complex slurred upstroke of the qrs complex this is also called as delta wave because of that we are seeing wide qrs complex right because of the slurring earlier happening so because of that qrs complex will become wider so you can see wider qrs complex which will be more than 120 millisecond and because of that you will find the pr interval will become shorter right so shorter pr interval will be there which will be less than 120 millisecond so what should be the treatment of this patient so those patients who are having no symptom without symptom you have to observe but in case of acute illness we have to go for acute therapy if there is a symptom acute therapy will be with procanamide or ibutilide but remember here we have to avoid the av nodal blocking drug like a beta blockers right like a beta blocker calcium channel blocker or adenosine all these are not required here because that will precipitate this right so that is why we have to avoid the av nodal blocking drugs and what is the final treatment final treatment should be the radio frequency catheter ablation that will be the final or definitive treatment for this patient so radio frequency catheter ablation will be the definitive treatment for the wolf parkinson white syndrome so keep revising this topic